a KQED television production. I'm telling you right now, I am hungry. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by Redwood Credit Union, community banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Business and personal, online and mobile, plus nationwide ATMs. Banking for people who call this place home. Sutter Health CPMC announcing its newly opened Mission Bernal Hospital with all private rooms and comprehensive labor and delivery services. SutterHealth.org slash Mission Bernal. Total Wine and More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine and More, now with eight Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. IRG has thousands of surfaces in stock now. Surfaces. Selection. Service. IRG at MarbleCompany.com. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. First, fine artist Rubina, Ruby Kazi left the corporate world to fulfill her passion to paint. It's been 10 years and she's loving her life, traveling, writing, and exploring her culinary heritage while cooking and serving classic Indian meals made from time-honored family recipes. And content marketing associate Angela Marujo works to make the internet a safer place. When not at her day job, she's an avid video gamer and blogger with an appetite for everything from hole-in-the-wall eateries to fine white tablecloth dining. But first, wardrobe stylist Stephen Candelino moved seven years ago all the way from New York to dress for success here in SF. He's first-generation Portuguese and has searched from Sonoma to San Jose for a taste of his homeland. There's only one spot that comes close. In San Francisco, it's called Uma Casa Restaurant. Uma Casa Restaurant is a way for me to introduce San Francisco and the Bay Area to Portuguese food and Portuguese culture. My name is Antelmo Faria, and I'm the executive chef of Uma Casa Restaurant in San Francisco. Uma Casa started as a pop-up, and after a couple years, we were fortunate to find a wonderful space, and my dream came true. <laughs> So I'm the son of Portuguese immigrants that came from the Azores Islands, which are an archipelago of islands off the coast of Portugal. But they're in the middle of the Atlantic and they're very isolated. And over the years, they've developed their own regional specialties, their way of living, their way of cooking. To me, Portuguese cuisine is very special because it's one of the first cuisines to introduce global elements into its food. So the Portuguese were getting spices from India and spices spicy peppers discovered in Africa, and they were getting tomatoes and potatoes from the Americas. <laughs> in the Bay Area, there's a large Portuguese American community, and we're able to get some of the traditional Portuguese products, cheeses, wines, olive oils, and really those allow us to incorporate traditional flavors into the Portuguese food. When I was a kid growing up in the Azores, my father owned a restaurant, and it was there that I fell in love with cooking and the vibrancy, the energy, and the way that it connected people. I, I'm a huge lover of Portugal, mm -hmm. of Portuguese food, especially Portuguese wine. Mm. So you are Portuguese. I am. I'm a Portuguese citizen. Um, my mother was born in Portugal. My father was born in Italy. And then I had the distinction of being born in New Jersey. So <laughs> growing up, Portuguese food was always around us. It's my comfort food. Right. I actually didn't realize how much I was yearning that connection. When Chef Telmo opened the restaurant, I was like one of the first people there, and I was ecstatic. So, uh, in my opinion, the menu is true 
It has a lot of the dishes that my grandma, uh, Vava, makes. And mm -hmm. the caldo verde is traditional as Portuguese can mm -hmm. go. It's it a cabbage soup, a soup. basically. Yeah. It's very healthy. And when I have it, it just reminds me of my grandmother. Right. The flavors are just so delicious. Also, one of my favorites at Umakasa is the rizaus, which are basically the Portuguese version of like a shrimp epinada, but you just bite into it and the heat comes out and the shrimp is just so delightful. That crunchy texture with that warm interior, it just makes me happy, right. ultimately. Yeah, we also started with the caldo verde and it was wonderful. Um, a lot of the recipes I've had usually have chunks of potato, this, but this had potato mixed into the broth and so it was almost like a thickener. Mm. Every single bite of that was delicious. It was meaty, it, but it didn't get soggy in the soup. We also started with the salt cod fritters. Mm -hmm. The outside was wonderfully crisp. Mm -hmm. I loved that, but the fish was a little pasty, mm -hmm. I guess I could say, and so that was just a little bit of a disappointment. But the, the soup followed the, the salt cod fritters. So, oh, uh, yeah, so, so it, was, it, it did make up Good. for it. Yeah. <laughs> and what about you, Ruby? What did you start with? I started with the tuna salad, mm -hmm. beautiful chunks of yellowfin tuna wow. and sprinkled with herbs. Yeah. It right. was fabulous, mm -hmm. to say the least. The flavors were just intense. The textures were amazing. And then for the main course, we ordered the halibut. Yeah. The halibut was cooked perfectly. It was crisp on the outside and soft and flaky on the inside, and it had a great balance of sweet and tangy. Are you familiar with Portuguese food? I, I mean, if a Portuguese chef can't do fish, then something's wrong. <laughs> You're right, right about that. So. You know, I, I am familiar with Portuguese food because we are from India, and right. Goa in India used to be a Portuguese colony. Mm -hmm. But the kind of food, the Portuguese food that we grew up with was very different. It was um, mission mash, a little bit of India and mm. a little bit of Portuguese. Mm -hmm. So I was really interested to see, you know, what the original Portuguese food was, and the food was excellent to the ambiance was fabulous. Again, for me, this is my comfort. So I went with just the grilled chicken. Right. There's just something about the way it's marinated and the way it's barbecued. You can taste mm -hmm. that smoke and the way they kind of quarter the chicken and the meat just falls mm -hmm. right off of it. I mean, I started using my fork and knife and then by the end I just had my hand, <laughs> I was having the drumstick. Mm -hmm. You know, they serve it with french fries, like no pretension. They and love just potatoes. Yeah. They, love they love potatoes, potatoes. yes. The rest of my party, they had the mariscada, which is like a seafood medley, mm -hmm. which is saffron rice with bacalao, scallops, mussels. And that's something that we'll typically do as a family, like December 24th, and it was just delightful. I also got the grilled chicken, and that was amazing. <laughs> it was so For good. grilled chicken, yeah. it's just, there's something about the way it's seasoned. Right. And it was delicious. The fries were so good. Right. We also got the octopus, and I wasn't mm. expecting how beautiful that presentation was. It was, you know, an octopus tentacle, and it was curled, mm. and it was, I think, the best octopus I've ever had. It was tender, almost melted in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And taking a fork full of the octopus and dipping it in that sauce. That's what you have mm -hmm. to that do. That was so that good. Is, <laughs> that's what you have to do, that was, exactly. I loved that. And the, and the bread with the olive butter. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. that was just awesome. Mm -hmm. But they do the olive butter, and then when we went, we got it with the chorizo butter. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I thought that that's a great twist. Uh, again, I'm a big Portuguese wine fan, and you can get Luis Pato sparkling barada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Portugal makes great sparkling wines I know. and great white wines from Vinho Verde, of course, too. Yep. And Cruzado, a great grape variety. So really fun. The food is very well paced. You're not rushed. Exactly. You really feel like you're on a vacation. It's a bustling spot, isn't it? It's, it is it's pretty busy, but really it's breezy. It makes you feel like you're sitting somewhere in a Mediterranean cafe in or Lisbon. a tavern. It's got the yeah. blue tiles. Yeah. The, blue tiles the blue tiles are yeah. beautiful. The servers were amazing. You know, he even explained to me what the name of the place meant. Umakasa means right. a home. And they want you to have that feel that you're, you know, dining with a family. Mm -hmm. It's an absolutely beautiful space, but I felt like our waitress was a little, I think, off. It was just an off night, but yeah, yeah. it's okay because the food was very good. And let's talk about desserts because Portuguese are known for desserts. Yes. Yeah. Pistage de nata, mm -hmm. pistage de balem, depending where you are. Where you are. Exactly. If you're in Lisbon, you have pistage de balem. That's right. right. It's just, it's a custard tart and it is... Egg-tastic. Yes, it is. <laughs> for me, that's just perfect. You know, you have the cinnamon, they give you like the cinnamon shaker. So like mm -hmm. go to town, you pour it on top, and just pairing that with a like a nice port, I can't go wrong with it. All right, your spot, Stephen, wrap it up for us. Uh, save yourself a 13 hour flight to Lisbon, the best Portuguese food in the Bay Area. All right, Angela? Elegant, beautiful, absolutely exquisitely crafted food. Okay, and Ruby? It gives you a classy Mediterranean food feel. I loved it. 
All right, if you would like to try Umakasa Restaurant, it's on Church at 28th Street in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-829-2264. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Sunday. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $50. Ruby is an accomplished home chef, but when she craves papadoms and pakoras with a twist, she heads to her newfound favorite. A place that got its start as a cheery little food truck called Dum, now has a brick and mortar home in San Francisco named Ritu Indian Soul Food. Thank you. Food is cooking something that is satisfying, that when you eat a bite of it, you're like, okay, you know, like I feel good. I'm Rupam Bhagat. I'm the chef owner of Ritu Indian Soul Food here in the Mission. So I grew up in Mumbai. My family is all about food. We never wished each other good morning. It was like, what do you want for breakfast? The best meals that I've enjoyed is the ones that my mom has cooked for me. I still call her to get recipes. Like I'll call her at like midnight her time and I'm like, oh, can you give me the recipe for the shrimp curry that you made? Ritu means seasons. We want our menu to be inspired by the seasons. Seasons have different feelings, right? Like for during spring or summer, you know, you want something bright, you want something to pop. During winter, we will switch on to something more heavier, something that is going to make you feel warmer. Every Indian eats street food. It's a big part of our culture. So we have a section on our menu which is chaat, which is street food. Also, we draw influences of the food that's here in the mission. You know, there's taquerias, there's all sorts of Latin food, you know, Peruvian, El Salvadorian, everything that you can think of, it's here. Uh, you know, we have an open kitchen, so we see the reaction. They take a bite of the food and they're like, wow, oh, I never expected this. There's very few other things that would bring a bunch of people together. You know, food always does that. All right, Ruby, you as I just said, are an accomplished home chef. What does that mean? Um, so I do cook Indian food mostly, but I also try to throw in a Moroccan or a Tunisian or a little bit of French here and there. Right. As a family, we don't really eat Indian food out very much mm -hmm. because I cook a lot of Indian food at home. And I grew up with my mom's cooking and you know, my mother-in-law was an exceptionally good cook. So I still have those flavors in my tongue and in my memory. So nothing else in the Bay Area really came very close to the flavors I grew up with and this place, it is very mm -hmm. authentic. The flavors were not watered down like most Indian restaurants are. You know, they throw in some yogurt and some tomato sauce to water the food down. Mm -hmm. And that's not the food that we are used to. We love the spice, we love the kick, we love the tanginess. Right, what was your experience, Stephen? We were seated right away. The service was great. They were very prompt, quickly felt at ease. The ambience I thought was really beautiful. It was bright, it was happy. Mm -hmm. We started with the spare ribs, which were unbelievable. It was fall off the bone, amazing. I am not a fan of pickled vegetables, really, but I enjoyed the pickled vegetables as well. I mean, that really set the pace, Set the honestly. tone, what about you, Angela? We started with the samosas and the tandoori chicken. Mm -hmm. And the samosas were, they were a little bigger than I'm accustomed to, which I was all for. Yeah. <laughs> but um, there was the kind of more traditional chutney that I expected to see, but then there was, I believe it was a tamarind sauce. That was so good. It was a little fruity, a little savory, couldn't get enough of that. But the star of the entire meal was the tandoori fried chicken. Oh my God. I wish I got that. Oh, that was, <laughs> oh man. Like I'm thinking about it now and wanting it again. It was so tender. It's super tangy, it's spicy, it's bright. When I think of that dish, I think of bright. Mm -hmm. But even though the chicken was amazing, it was the broccoli that really stood out. The florets mm -hmm. were just ever so slightly crisped and it soaked up that sauce. Yeah. That dish was gone. <laughs> the last time when I was there, the chef recommended that I try the chef's menu, mm -hmm. yeah. which is a little bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, as part of the appetizers, uh, they gave us a kale chart. So just imagine, this is where he's bringing the East and the West together. Right, chart right. is as Indian or as Mumbai sure. as you can get. And kale, you never even hear of kale <laughs> in India. So he, he fries these kales in this very light batter. And they're just so crisp and you just mm -hmm. bite into them and you feel like you're in heaven. And then they have these semolina puffs, which is a very traditional Indian street fare, 
which is dipped with yogurt and it has you know a little bit of paprika a little bit of cilantro it just melts in your mouth um, for the other appetizers I had um, the lamb sea kebab and the malai chicken now malai chicken is a recipe that was meant for the kings it's meant for royalty and I certainly felt like royalty there. <laughs> <laughs> I think the chef has probably marinated this meat for a couple of nights just grilled it to perfection in an mm -hmm. oven my family just wiped it out in the second right. and in the main course I tried the butter chicken now the chef comes out he brings each and every dish and he talks you through it mm -hmm. and I was asking him what the secret of that texture is and he's one of the chefs who was ready to give it out right. which is you know they're so guarded yeah, about their right. secrets all right secret alert, alert. <laughs> what is it? he said he simmers it and he strains it ah. twice okay mm -hmm. and then he barbecues the chicken and oh. then simmers it in the sauce so it just absorbs all the sauces and it is paired with a little bit of basmati rice on yes. the side that was just a complete finisher. We Wonderful. did the same thing. We, we got the butter chicken with the basmati rice and mm -hmm. it blew my mind. The flavors were delicious. The sauce there. I mean, we, we also had the naan, of course, the garlic naan. The garlic. So again, just dipping it in. That's right. They also have a healthier take on the naan. They also have a multi-grain naan as we well. We got that. It was good. It was warm, had this like warm, nutty taste. I mm -hmm. loved that. Yeah. We got the pork vindaloo, but it didn't have enough sauce for my liking. Mm. Um, but we also got it with the basmati rice. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because we ordered the chicken biryani. Mm. And I guess ordering a rice dish and then ordering basmati rice on the side uh, kind of, kind of yeah. tripped up the servers. Yeah. Well, no, no, it wasn't too much rice for me. Really? Uh, okay. No, no. Right. <laughs> you just wanted more sauce. <laughs> I just wanted more sauce. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of a rice fiend. Yeah. But yeah. I had to explain to him, oh, no, I want the basmati for the vindaloo because I don't want to mix the distinct flavors of the vindaloo and the biryani. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it turned out great. I mean, the That's vindaloo good. was wonderful. That pork was very good, cooked well. I just wanted more of that more sauce. sauce. Mm -hmm. What about desserts? I had the rabri. You know, they have the classic Indian kheer, which is paired with crumbled cookies. Mm -hmm. And you take a little bit of, you know, the creamy kheer. It's divine. All right, Ruby, your spot. Wrap it up for us. Classic Indian food with a twist and seasonal vegetables and fruits. You can't go wrong here. Stephen. Great service, uh, easy environment. I'll be back for the value and delicious food. All right, and Angela. Unique flavors and takes on traditional dishes. Surprising. Loved it. All right, if you would like to try Ritu Indian Soul Food, it's on 24th at Folsom in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-874-9045. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Sunday with lunch on Friday and brunch on the weekends. Reservations are recommended and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is under $30. Who needs a bottle or a box when you can tote your wine in a can? That's right, a can. This is the hottest trend in wine. Heading to the beach? Grab a tin or two. Out for a picnic? Throw some of these in the cooler. Hosting a tailgate party? You guessed it. Bring along a can. Convenience is key when it comes to talking about why canned wines are popping. They're simple to pack and easily recyclable with a low carbon footprint. Their growth is impressive too, with sales doubling year over year, recently topping nearly $40 million. Wine and can comes in red, white, rosé, and even bubbly versions. Each can contains up to a half a bottle of wine, and you don't need a corkscrew or even a glass. Hmm. Now that is convenient. See you at the beach. Angela loves comfort food, especially mac and cheese. When she can't stop and eat at her favorite spot in Oakland, she takes it to go because that's all they make. Yep. Just mac and cheese. <laughs> and it all came about because of a hardworking attorney's craving. Step outside the blue box to homeroom mac and cheese. I was working as a corporate attorney, actually, and super miserable. And I came home one day from work, and I really wanted some comfort food. And so I pulled out my dad's recipe and started cooking, and that was pretty much the aha moment where I was like, wait a minute, this is the best mac and cheese I've ever had, and there's no restaurant that's dedicated to mac and cheese. Someone should do this, and that someone should be me. I'm Erin Wade, and I'm the founder and CEO of Homeroom in Oakland. The name of the restaurant is Homeroom. The hope is that it brings you back to Homeroom, which was a class in school that honestly had no real purpose other than just throwing paper airplanes, goofing off with your friends, eating lots of mac and cheese. 
I mean, mac and cheese is such a simple dish. It's five ingredients, so if, if any of them don't shine, you definitely taste it. So you want to be using whole full-fat milk, butter, flour, really, really good cheese. So our mission is to be the best part of people's day All right, guys. for both our customers and our staff. My littlest fans are Ellie and Isaac, my two kids, and they are just obsessed. And actually, Ellie asked me the other day, she got into bed with me in the morning, and she was like, Mommy, when you die, can I be the boss of homeroom? That is how much she loves it. She's just waiting for the day she can take over the mac and cheese empire. <laughs> Okay, I have to say, in all my years, a restaurant devoted to mac and cheese. <laughs> just explain this to me. Okay, carbs rule everything around me, <laughs> as just as just cheese. <laughs> and so, yeah, I grew up a big mac and cheese fan. My mom was a mac and cheese fan. My grandma and my aunt actually make this kind of mac and cheese with kind of a Mexican twist. Mm -hmm. It makes me think of home. Once I discovered Homeroom, I was obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I've been there for my birthday the past two years and I've ordered it more than I care to admit. And you take it to go. <laughs> yeah, take it to go. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little different. It gets a slightly different consistency when you get it delivered versus when you go there. It's real creamy. It's hot. Piping hot. Mm. Piping hot. That's I mean, true. they serve it to you right out of the oven. Right. Yeah, you know, I've bounced around the menu a little bit, but I keep going back to the classic mac. There's some mix of cheeses. Yeah. I think there's some pecorino, cheddar. You got to get it with the breadcrumbs. Adding the, the breadcrumbs on top just gives it another dimension. Mm -hmm. It's both creamy and a little bit crunchy at the same time, but not grainy. It just comes together in this heavenly pot of melty, cheesy pasta. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you like mac and cheese to begin with? I'm on the fence. Do your kids <laughs> like mac and cheese? My kids love mac and cheese, and I always end up eating their leftovers. Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> but I really wanted to like this place for my kids' sake. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go in on a Sunday night. Mm -hmm. It took us an hour and a half once we got there because yeah. of the line. Um, you know, it's a very perky, it's a very breezy place. And the kind of audience that was there really made me feel very youthful. <laughs> Good. Yeah. 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 I must have brought the average age of the restaurant up <laughs> <laughs> It was like all 20 year olds, you know, and it's called home room for a reason yeah, yeah, yeah. because, you know, oh, high school graduates, you know, young grads. They're and, like all the teachers yeah. here. <laughs> Good vibe to the place and going with, you know, how youthful the audience was. My daughter stuck with the classic and she really, really loved it. Um, me and my son were a little more ambitious. I called for the spicy crab, mm -hmm. big size portions, you know, with a good panko crust, really creamy, and I could taste a lot of different cheeses. Um, for me, it was just too much mac and cheese. <laughs> some people might misconstrue it as being a little boring, and some people might not have much love for mac and cheese, and hey, I get it. Yeah. And they, they do have a good sizing of vegetables on the side, so I mm -hmm. called for the honey glazed carrots, mm -hmm. which yes. were amazing. Yes. You know, They were in a nice citrus vinaigrette, very well roasted with the right amount of crunch. Mm -hmm. uh, they have some Brussels sprouts that were really good. Um, but you can get gluten-free, right? And gluten-free yeah, options. Yeah, and I think dairy-free. Vegan yeah. as well. Vegan yeah, as well. You can. Yeah, you can. I mean, we started with uh, sides, which mm -hmm. there's not very many of, but what we did have, we had also the um, glazed carrots, which were delicious. But I also recommend the spicy cauliflower. Mm. Cauliflower is cooked perfectly, crunchy, and then you get that spice in there. Very good. And then they start bringing in the like bowls of mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah. And we did the chicken bacon ranch yes. mac and cheese. Yeah. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. I had the crab myself, just the crab, not the spicy crab. It was super crispy. The bread crumbs is the way to go. You're absolutely right. It creates like this nice, kind of dome to crack into, yes. and then you start delving in. Right. The flavors were great. There was a lot of crab in there. It was so super yummy. It came out piping hot. Mm -hmm. I have to say, you know, we're talking and we're eating and we were having rosé and we actually sat. Which is a great pairing with mac and cheese, I have to say, to cut <laughs> the richness of that, to yes. the vibrancy of a beautiful rosé. Yeah, and we were sitting outside. Um, we got there super early because mm -hmm. we had heard about the wait. So that's the tip, go early. Go early. Yeah. Go early. For sure. And after all of those carbs, <laughs> did you have have room for dessert. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we ordered the peanut butter pie, and I just told the server, I'm like, do me a favor, just bring out the to-go container <laughs> for this, okay? Yeah. Just preemptively, so then we can pay yeah. the check and leave. Yeah. So we're sitting there, they have a bite of the peanut butter pie, and I'm like, something went off. I'm like, okay, this is really good. Yeah. And then I had another bite. 
and another bite, and we were splitting it. And by the end, there was Didn't no to-go to go container. container. I loved it. It was so good. Desserts are fantastic mm -hmm. here. The grasshopper pie is one of the ones I recommend. Ooh, nice. The homemade Oreos are really good, too. Yeah. Uh, they have a beautiful cookbook of all the classic recipes. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I'm going to try some of that at home. Fantastic. Well, this is your spot. Wrap it up for us. Comfort food. Definitely come hungry and just come with an open mind and have fun. All right, and Steven? <laughs> um, I'll be back for the takeout, not a sit-down destination for me. And Ruby? It's for a niche Mac clubbing audience. It brings a smile to your face. I would take them back, my kids back, surely. All right. If you would like to try homeroom mac and cheese, it's on 40th at Webster in Oakland. The telephone number is 510-597-0400. It's open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Sunday. Reservations are not accepted, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. I have to thank my great guests on this week's show, Stephen Candelino, who introduced us to the authentic Portuguese flavors at Uma Casa Restaurant, Ruby Kazi, who shared her place with a new twist on traditional Indian fare at Ritu Indian Soul Food, and Angela Marujo for the mac and cheese and mac and cheese variations <laughs> at Homeroom Mac and Cheese in <laughs> Oakland. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sobraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. 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 So now it's your turn. We want to hear from you if you visited any of our Check Please restaurants. You can post a selfie on Instagram, join the conversation on Facebook, and tweet us anytime. And don't forget to visit our website. All the shows are there, along with my wine videos and notes about the wines we drink on set. You'll also find our fun new web series, Taste This, where we celebrate food and drinks around the Bay. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... <music> Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. IRG has thousands of surfaces in stock now. Surfaces. Selection. Service. IRG at MarbleCompany.com. Total Wine and More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine and More, now with eight Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. Sutter Health CPMC announcing its newly opened Mission Bernal Hospital with all private rooms and comprehensive labor and delivery services. SutterHealth.org slash Mission Bernal. Redwood Credit Union, community banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Business and personal, online and mobile, plus nationwide ATMs. Banking for people who call this place home.